Hello and welcome to my channel. Um, this uh, video is going to be about how I uh, put this little mouse inside this teacup. Uh, it's basically uh, layer masking and I'll show you how I got the uh, finger detail and we'll, I'll just basically show you how I used layer masking uh, to uh, get this accomplished. All right. I have the uh, images I used. I used two images. I used an image of a teacup and an image of a mouse that I found. And I'll show you that right now. Let me close this out. Here are the two images that I used. Now one, this one's kind of washed out. The tea, the teacup is kind of washed out. So I'm going to use curves, color curves, to give it uh, a little more depth. Uh, so we'll go color curves leave it on value start in the middle here make sort of like an S curve that looks pretty good uh, now I'm using uh, GIMP 2.818. Now the latest is I think is 2.10.8. Uh, I think I'm not sure what the last number is, but it's 2.10. So you'll be able to do everything that I do here in 2.10 with slight variations. Okay, the mouse image here I'm going to auto crop so I can move it around nicely without having any excess on the outside of the layer. So let's go to layer auto crop layer. Okay, now I'm going to move it. Select the move tool and move active layer. Now the cup is a little large, so we're going to scale down the teacup. Uh, let's just check. I believe this has an alpha channel. Uh, yes, it has an alpha. Ch has an alpha, alpha channel. Now I'm going to scale this layer down. So I'm going to click the uh, scale tool, click on the canvas, and link these two chains together, clicking the chain so that when we scale it, it scales evenly on all sides. That looks okay to me. Alright, now we want to position our mouse where it needs to be and then we can start layer masking. So let me lower the opacity of the mouse layer. And, and move it into position or close to it. It looks like it could use a little rotation there. So we'll rotate that a little. Click the rotate tool. Click on the canvas. And I'm going to rotate it from this axis by moving the access point to where the fingers are on this uh, creature's hand and the edge of this um, container so I'm ready to rotate it so I'll just pull it down slightly to there and select rotate and a little bit needs to rotate a little bit more so I'll click again move the axis I mean axis point to there and do it again just slightly and that looks like that did it we can move the layer just a little more, say, to there. 
and there, there, there it is. It's in position. We can bring the opacity back up. Now we're going to start working on the layer mask. Now to get a layer mask on this layer, you right click on the uh, layer. You want the layer mask on and select add layer mask. We want white full opacity. Now 2.10 is going to look at the the uh, dialog for the mask will look different but you can just you can select uh, white full opacity in 2.10 as well and select add. Okay I like to use a soft brush. I have soft a soft brush here. Hardness of 0 025. Find a brush that's close to that size. I'm sure you have one. Now I have my scroll wheel set to increase and decrease the size of the brush, which is a very handy feature to enable. Anyway, make your brush kind of large and make sure you're on black. Make sure your color, foreground color is black and begin to paint away unnecessary parts of the image on the layer mask. It doesn't matter if you if you uh, go over a little, make sure go keep going. Change your brush and keep going around. It doesn't matter if you're you you paint out some of the head and some of the other fur because we're going to replace some of that with while by working with the layer mask to uh, gain back what we've uh, removed. So that's our basic layer mask now. Now we can see our layer mask by right clicking on a layer mask and going show layer mask. Now we can continue to paint on the, our layer mask while we have it uh, the dialogue the well while we have the layer masks being shown and to just to clean it up and make sure we've got most of what we wanted removed all right now right click on the layer mask again and unselect show layer mask remove the check mark and there's a little cute mouse, but the fur is a little, the whiskers have, have disappeared because we have painted them out, but we can use our smudge brush to regain this. Without having to use the paint tool or the paint brush again. And this will give us some of the fur back as well. Just smudge ever so slightly around on the layer mask to get the ear back. Some of the head. Oop, I moved the layer mask. Sm keep smudging it. Most people don't know that you can use the smudge tool on, on layer masks, but you can. This is how I got the fingers done pretty well. Now it's still, I could see part of the edge of the container underneath his finger here. So I'm going to rotate this layer again one more time. So we'll go rotate and we'll move the axis point, axis point to the finger and just move it down slightly. Let me do it one more time. Right to there, very good, okay. Now we can continue our smudging to get the fingers back and some of the fur back. Get our ear back.
just trying to reestablish what we've painted out with the layer mask. And the good thing about this image is that it matches it matched up pretty well with the background of the glass, I mean the cup, the teacup, which was fortunate. Smudged the little fingers, pushing the white back into the black, and pushing the black up into the white. to refine our mask better. Okay. Now to get this hair, make a, make sure the brush is small. and just go back and forth and in and out like so the smaller the brush the thinner the lines will be now you can go up and down as well Just keep adjusting your brush. Until you get most of the fur that you want left in place. See if you're going back and f going back and forth makes little streaks. Okay. Get this ear. Smudge around the ear a little. We don't see so much of this black. That's basically, this is basically how I did the mouse. It was by smudging the, moving the layer mask around and working the layer mask to get it just the way I wanted it. Moving the white into the black and the black into the white. give us some fur like now you can always zoom out to look at your image to see how it's faring So we'll zoom out to say 100. Okay, that looks okay. Now the, this outer rim is a little dark, so we're going to click on the uh, main image here, not the layer mask, and use our dodge and burn tool. Set to dodge. And we're going to lower the opacity pretty low. And we're going to go in, adjust our brush so it fits nearly the area we would like to uh, lighten since it's on dodge and the opacity is low it won't lighten very much so the technique I use is to click click in the areas that you want to lighten until they sort of sort of match with 
the surrounding areas. Clicking as I go. Clicking and clicking. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'll do a little around the ears. A little dodge around the ears. Clicking as we go. Okay, that looks a little better. A lot better. I think the fingers could be smudged more, so I'm going to go back to the smudge tool and smudge out some of that. I think there's some white or from the container itself. We'll just smudge that away. Adjusting our brush as we go. Okay. Almost there. think that just about does it for the fingers but that's basically how I did it now to get the whiskers I have made paths for the whiskers I'll show you the paths if I go to paths paths menu import paths I have the whiskers already uh, made up let me move these whiskers in place select the move tool and select the path uh, uh, tool here the path uh, select path and put it on the path and move it over and that looks pretty good right there I think And I just create a new layer, right click on the layer, and so select new layer. By default it makes a transparent layer in, in 2.8. I'm not sure about 2.10. Now we can sample a color from here, which I'll do. Try this whisker color here, which will work. And we'll just double click on here, stroke. And we're going to stroke with uh, 8, zero 08, which is very light. So we'll just stroke that once, and there we have our whiskers back. Now you can gar 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 Gershon blur, I think it is. Filter blur. I'm going to Gaussian Blur. I think it's Gaussian Blur. I'm not sure. Our whisker. I can't really see it very well here. Oops. Can't really see that that well, probably. You probably can't see it at all. But anyway, I'm going to blur it by 8. 8. I press Enter, and it makes the blur vertical and horizontal the same because the, the links are the chain links are connected together so I'll click OK now you can duplicate this layer and select and go color hue and saturation 
go lightness up the lightness saturation click OK and repeat the Gaussian blur I think it's GAU Gaussian Gaussian and lower lower the opacity of the bottom layer click the eye off of the top layer so you can see what the bottom layer looks like we'll, we'll put it at 60 turn on the top layer and we'll lower that opacity to say 50 and there we have it that's pretty much it for the mouse now that's how I got the mouse in the cup there's a lot of ways that you can remove the background from the teacup, the white background. Here's one way. You could use a, the select tools using the ellip select tool to create an elliptical selection around our saucer. not perfect because the saucer is not perfect or a better way is to use a use paths okay so we'll select none and we'll use a path you can use paths I put one there and I'll put a dot there pull this down put a dot there clicking the control key and clicking on the line will add another node pull that out pull that out and that will stretch the line out click on the node you can adjust this line that makes a very nice very nice radius and you can also make selections from paths that looks pretty good that looks really nice I'm going to click this node and add some more paths add a path say, to here here and connect connected to the end here pull this up to there adjust the radius with the little arms here pull this down now it's sort of going in. I think it's sort of going in. So this is coming out and this is going in. Paths can be difficult to work with. You just have to keep practicing with them. Now we have a basic shape here for our, our uh, cup. See, that's one way to do it. And there's another way you can do it. That is very quick. I'll show you that. You can go color. Um, I mean layer. Transparency. Color to alpha and remove the alpha the white uh, from the alpha channel now select the layer and go layer to image size layer to image size and take your magic wand click inside I mean outside the cup will give us a selection around what was left and then we can just uh, add a new layer, new layer, 
beneath it. And we can take the freehand select tool. That's what the free select tool, not free, well, by hand. Anyway, and uh, we want to subtract the missing or the p parts that were taken away that we don't want to be taken away. And just create a radius for the cup edge manually. Taking away a lot of the jagged lines. Jagged lines behind the head don't really matter much. The closer the you put the nodes for the free select, the more accurate the selection will be. Or okay. Now there may be some down here. Let's see. Yes, there's one. There's one here. So we'll just go like this. Create a nice short radius with the select freehand select tool. Free select tool. There's a little bit here as well. It's hard to see. Probably I should have put a white background, but I'm going to add the white back that I removed, but only on the inside of the cup. That was that's the whole plan here. Seems to be a quick way. I could have just used a layer mask to remove the white. Okay, now we go um, select invert and add take white, the background, and drag the uh, uh, background over onto the canvas and it will fill the, uh, the selection. We can select none or save this selection. I like to save it to channel in case we want to use it later. So we'll save it to channel. So it's saved to channel now back to our layers. Now we want to get the handle. Select none. We want to remove the white from the inside of the handle. So we go back to our cup, teacup layer and click and drag expands the pixels that the magic wand will select. So if I keep dragging it will eventually fill, will select all the pixels or you know anything that's of lighter lighter color select none so I'll do that again so if you just click it won't if you just click it'll leave a little bit left so if we click and drag down holding the the mouse button we'll get a more refined selection and then we can clear that from the white edit clear and to further refine that selection we can go edit I mean select feather and use the default of five and then clear it again edit clear and then even clear it again edit clear okay select none so now we have The cup, we can merge this down. It's not perfect. And then you can add grass if you like. Here's a, uh, I have a grass brush here that I used. Let's see if I can find it quickly. Christmas stuff. It was just Christmas, so made a lot of Christmas stuff. Let's see. Brush is called Maggie's. Um, Maggie's grass, Maggie's animated grass brush, I believe. See, now when I want to find it, I can't find it. <laughs> it's 
It's always the way. It always seems to be the way. Maggie's grass brush. Where are you? Where are you? I know you're here somewhere. I know there's another way of doing this. <laughs> Must. <be. laughs> I'm just lazy. Being lazy. Anyway, that's basically how I did it. You can add grass if you want to add grass. You can add whatever you like. I just wanted to show you the layer masking and how I did the did the layer masking to get the fingers and the little mouse inside the cup there. I'll add a background just so you can get a better view of this. I'll add a uh, gradient background of, of blue. Get a blue uh, gradient right here. And there it is. Little mouse, cute little mouse in a teacup. Anyway, that's it. So long for now.